Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be sharing with you all five things that I wish that someone told me before I went right into grad school. So as most of you know, I am a final semester counseling and psychology student getting my master's and I cannot believe I'm almost done. Like these past few years, now that I'm at the tail end, I feel like they've flown by and I'm excited to share some of my learning experiences with you all as I've been across this journey and as some of you are maybe considering a higher degree in psychology. So let's not waste too much time as usual and let's get right on into um, these five things that I wish someone told me. I wish someone told me before I went into grad school is that you really need to know what it is that you want to do. So as most of you know I went straight into grad school. I didn't take a break between undergrad and grad. I just like went straight on in. So I graduated in May of 2018 and at the end of that May or like mid-May 2018 I was already taking classes for graduate school. So I say that you need to have a sense of what you want to do because all of my other tips resonate around that and for others I think that um, you know if you're still unsure of what it is that you want to do within the field or if a certain degree is going to be a good choice for you. I would wait and work in the field for a little bit and the reason that I say that you need to have some sort of sense of what you want to do is because there really is no like undecided option when it comes to grad school like you need to go in knowing what kind of degree you want to get and that's why undergrad is great because it gives you some sort of flexibility you can get your you know general education courses before you go straight into deciding and finalizing a major with a master's degree it's completely different like you don't really have time or gen ed courses it's like you go straight into the program you go straight into like the introductory courses in your first year and then you delve right into the deep stuff so that's the only reason why i say that the second thing i wish someone told me is that it is nothing like undergrad so i didn't really have a sense a good sense of what um, a master's degree entails and how much it literally sucks out of you energy wise and all that not that undergrad was easy for me because it wasn't I was a double major with a minor I, I was taking a whole lot of classes and in graduate school I averaged about like three classes a semester which for an undergraduate student sounds like a breeze in graduate school no no it is like no joke it is like one I'm taking one class right now and it's still exhausting like grad school classes are nothing like undergrad they're just such different expectations of you your professors are expecting you to come in with the mindset that you're a graduate student and they really don't take they really don't take a lot of crap if I'm being honest like you know when it comes to submitting assignments on time things like that a lot of things aren't going to fly I have seen a lot of people unfortunately who had to leave the, the program because it just wasn't a good fit for them and you know something happened within their life and like they they weren't accommodated enough to the point where they could continue on and it's really hard so that's why I say it's nothing like undergrad like it's not easy if you think it's just gonna be an easy degree you're so wrong like I'm sorry but you're mistaken it's a whole lot of work I commend anyone who is holding a master's degree bachelor's to any degree period is hard but the masters and doctoral students out there I feel for you because it requires another set of balance like most master's level students are working another full-time job and I think that's what also makes it really difficult, you know, very different from undergrad for a lot of people. I do understand that there are many students out there who do have to work multiple jobs in order to pay for their degree. Um, but for the most part, master's level student, it's like across the board. Like 
you know like everybody's working full-time in some capacity whether you're like a graduate intern um, at a school or you are working full-time in an agency or organization you're like working full-time as opposed to undergrad I think I saw more students who weren't working full-time and more so working like part-time on the side for a few hours a week um, and had a lot of more free time during the day. That's just my experience from what I've seen. And also like just the rigor of the classes is a whole lot more at a master's level than it was at undergrad. It's a lot about application. So it's not a lot about, at least for my degree, it has not been a lot about the memorization. I feel like, I feel like in undergrad, a lot of what I needed to do was you know memorize and retain information for exams etc in a, a master's level program it's a lot about application like sure you memorize x y and z but do you know how to apply it that's that's the challenge like do you actually know how to apply the information that you're taking in and they will put you to the test like they will like for for my program we've done so many role plays like we'll learn something and like the next week they'll be like so who's role playing first? And I'm like, <laughs> like we just learned this concept, and you want us, you want to put us to the test? Yeah. So that's basically some things that um, I wish someone had, you know, warned me about, so that I had more of an understanding walking in. In the same realm of that, um, I also just want to say that my third thing I wish someone told me when I was going into grad school is that it is expensive <laughs> of course you do your research but when you're in the the thick of it um it is pretty expensive um i of course i recommend like internships assistantships things that will help you pay for school scholarships things like that um in terms of financial aid you are considered independent <laughs> So you don't have to enter in your parents' um, information on your FAFSA. You're basically on your own. So that's where they can get you when it comes to loans because you can take out loans for living expenses as well. Whether you have like an apartment or for traveling, you can take out those loans. And money is just a huge factor and I think why a lot of people also hesitate on getting another degree because you just got all of this this all these loans from undergrad and like you're just gonna add more on and it's just it's just a lot so that's also something I wish people had told me ab about the master's degree even even though I knew like actually being in it I was just like this is <laughs> it's a whole lot of money and also like the multitasking piece of like working going to school full-time the work-life balance it's a, it's a challenge for everybody like at this point is work-life balance even a thing like is it even attainable <laughs> the fourth thing that I wish someone talked to me more about and this is for my psychology um, students out there I wish someone told me more about my internship and my practicum going in I'm studying to become a licensed mental health counselor so going in, I, I knew that I was going to have to do some kind of field experience and, and apply my skills in that sense, but I wish someone kind of, you know, explained to me the hours <laughs> because I had to do like 100 hours for my practicum over the summer and now I'm wrapping up 600 hours and to me it sounded really minimal starting out I was like okay that doesn't sound too bad like across a year um, and then actually being in it I'm like wow no that is that is a lot of my field placement it's just it's just a lot of time out of your week on top of classes so that's something that I also recommend is that if you do have a field placement experience that you have to do and that's a requirement for the degree I recommend that you take as many classes as you can before that because right now I'm only taking one class and that's because I kind of wanted to relax my last semester and just have internship and one class and it's still a lot for me just with one class and my internship so that's something that I'm grateful for I can't imagine taking like another two classes right now I would probably lose my mind like 
So if you can, get on top of your classes earlier on in the program before you start working on different field placement sites, I definitely recommend that. And definitely in your interviews and things like that, talk to them about the specifications of that because I know it's different for if you're getting your MSW and you're trying to become a licensed social worker, I know the hours are different. It depends on your state too. Um, a state's hours vary from state to state. And also make sure that whatever site you're on, check in with your state's regulations for licensure because a certain amount of hours may have to be supervised by someone who has the same license that you want. So for example, at my internship site, there are plenty of different um, therapists and counselors who have different licenses. So some people are licensed um, marriage and family therapists, some people are LMHCs, LICSWs. For me being an LMHC, my supervisor is an LMHC and I needed that. So make sure that you look into all of those requirements because that is something that I wish I asked more questions about because it was told to me. It was told to me, but I didn't ask that many questions about it. I was, I'm thinking it's like undergrad. I'm like, okay, I can like knock out some hours for like internship. I can do that totally. And then you're there for like a majority of your week and you're like, wow, this is like a full time, it feels like a full time job. So this is the fifth and final thing that I wish someone told me before I jumped in to get my master's degree. And that is that a lot of the students that you're going to be working with are of a wide array of like ages, experiences, all of that. So in undergrad for the most part, like if you go between the ages of 18 to like 24, you're within like the majority. A lot of undergraduate students are that age. So you feel like you can really resonate with a lot of people. In a master's degree, it's a little bit different being that a lot of people, some people are coming from working in the field for 20 years and then they want a master's degree. Some people are like you and they just went straight from undergrad to graduate school and others have been like working for a couple of years, still working and like want to try something different. Some people may have had a completely different degree and are going in to try something different. So everyone is different and like be open-minded to that because you're going to learn so much from different people and their different experiences so ask questions be curious that's a huge tip and like grow your network network with people see and understand where they've worked where people have had their internships before like it's a great way to network as well so i definitely recommend that too and with that being said it's also pretty competitive because everyone is bringing their own strengths to the table and for me going in straight through undergrad of course you know i'm really familiar with like coursework and, and schooling um, as opposed to someone who's been working out in the field for a while but at the same time i didn't have a lot of field experience other than my undergraduate internship so those were things that other people were bringing to the table that I hadn't spent a lot of time doing so definitely be open-minded to that experience know that people are going to be competitive and also like you'll find a really great support system so those are just a few things that I wish people told me before I sent in my deposit and locked it in and went straight into grad school and of course if y'all have any questions about my grad school experience feel free to um, reach out to me on my social media platforms on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all of that jazz or drop them in the comment section below. Uh, thank you all so much for watching this video and I will see y'all soon. Bye!